Hey guys, welcome to the show. Joseph Robert, the fantasy football counselor. Welcome to the Saturday DFS show. We are talking about all the optimal players for you to start in your DraftKings and FanDuel lineups at each position. All the optimal players, guys, I'm going to go over it here with you. Now, if you're playing FanDuel, DraftKings, or whatever DFS you're playing, understand I'm going to give you guys the best possible strategy this week or the optimal players and a little bit of a strategy to help you guys crush your week, okay? Now, I've been doing pretty good in my DFS lineups. There has been some hiccups. Now, last week, for example, I was playing in a league with 715 people. I finished 19th, won around 80 bucks. The only difference was one one player and like 10, 12 points difference. So sometimes it's just a matter of starting the right guy over another guy. And it's very hard to win these GPP pools, I'm telling you, because some of them have like 500,000, 700,000 people in them. I always finish near the top, win some money, but it's very hard because no matter what you do, there's always somebody that has that perfect lineup. So you're like, okay, yeah, I got that player, nailed that player, got that player. That player could have got me more, but the other guy, when you look at it, when you look at the top guy, he's plugged in that right player. It's not that they know more than you. It's just the fact that maybe they've entered multiple lineups. They've randomized it. They got lucky. Uh, You know, it's just like, you know, it's a lottery, right? It's a lottery, So if you look at the lottery, you pick some numbers, someone else may hit it, you may not, right? But this one is a little more controlled. You have more control over some players, and you have a better advantage if you know what you're doing, okay? But yeah, sometimes these guys just lottery picks and they win. So it is is luck-driven, but there is some strategy, and we'll talk about that here. Uh, One piece of strategy that I've been finding is that if you're looking at two wide receivers, let's just say uh, Thielen and Jefferson, right? One week, one goes off. The other one, the other guy goes off. So sometimes you got to kind of, what goes up must come down. You got to kind of feel out the weeks, look at the matchups. It's a, it's a combination of everything, but there is some strategy to it. So you got to be smart when you are selecting these players. So if a guy has a huge week, be cautious. Maybe next week he doesn't have it. Maybe you might want to start the other wide receiver. So it is some strategy to starting the right person. All right, optimal players at each position. Let's start off with the quarterback position. Stafford's got a great matchup. Actually, I'm going to filter this by uh, the most expensive players. Now, Wilson's got an expensive, he's expensive. He's 8,000, he's playing Arizona, but it's the seventh hardest first position. Be cautious with him. Allen playing the Jets, mid-range matchup. Pat Mahomes here, he's got a good matchup. He is $7,400 on DraftKings, expensive against Denver. Kyler Murray, second easiest matchup versus position against Seattle, $7,100. Aaron Rodgers, mid-range matchup. He is playing Houston, but he should have a bounce-back game. He is $7,000. Some value plays here for actually uh, Tom Brady now with the acquisition of Antonio Brown. He's $6,600. He is playing Raiders. He does have the seventh hardest, sorry, sorry, eighth easiest matchup versus position. Tom Brady, he is $6,600. I'm going to give you some value plays here. Uh, Andy Dalton, I don't really trust him. He is $6,000. Gardner Minshew coming off a pretty good week or a Good couple weeks, sixty nine hundred dollars or fifty nine hundred dollars for him. Teddy Bridgewater, I love this week coming for you know he's gonna have a bounce back week and he's got the third easiest matchup versus position. He is only fifty eight hundred dollars. I like him as a value play at quarterback this week, uh, and that's pretty much it. Those are the guys I trust here at quarterback. Okay, but I do like Pat Mahomes matchup, but you are going to be paying for him. Okay, so that's something you got to be aware of. Uh, running back now, looking at the price, the most expensive here is Alvin Kamara. But he's got the fifth easiest matchup versus position against Carolina. They can't stop the run. He's been pretty hot. I mean, 48 points, 21 points, and 20 points last week. Those are the last three games. Always putting up points consistently. And the matchup is there. But again, you're going to have to pay for him if you want him. $7,900. Aaron Jones, $7,200. Easiest matchup versus position here against Houston. Um, But again, 13 points last week. Is that going to continue on that low floor kind of trend we want to see a high ceiling could be a high ceiling game he is due i'm personally not sold on aaron jones uh kareem hunt i mean another guy easy matchup here he is playing cincinnati only eight points last week okay was a little bit of a tougher matchup this week a little bit easier for him could start but again sixty eight hundred dollars not a value play ronald jones sixty two hundred dollars here second easiest matchup versus position Getting into some value, Todd Gurley coming off a mediocre 10 point game last week. He had a good week the week before. He is playing Detroit. It is a good matchup. He is a value play. David Johnson been mediocre and safe at best. Double digits plays. That's it. Double digit points, but very low double digit points every single week. Uh, he does have an easy matchup versus Green Bay. $5,300. You may want to consider flexing if you want a safe play. 
Uh, J.D. McKissick, $4,600, another value play. Easy matchup for you there. Singletary is a value, but I don't really trust him. He hasn't been performing, but he is a value play at the running back position. And Justin Jackson, 14 points last week. Him or Kelly could have a good game. They do have the fourth easiest matchup versus position. You may want to consider them, but I don't think the ceiling has been high for those guys. They have been throwing more there with the Chargers, okay? Uh, Looking at the wide receiver position, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, you're going to pay $8,200, but he does have an easy matchup. Devontae Adams, easy matchup. Julio Jones Allen, and Calvin Ridley, easy matchups, but you're going to have to pay for them if you are playing them in DFS. It is an expensive price tag. Julio Jones, $7,100 on DraftKings, but not as expensive as the $8,200 of DeAndre Hopkins, and he had a killer game last week, 37 points compared to Hopkins, who had a bad game with nine points last week. But again, I guess similar to what I said, I think DraftKings and FanDuel are kind of compensating and saying, okay, well, Hopkins had a bad week last week. We, we expect him to have a good week this week. He's got an easy matchup. We're going to spike him up at $8,200 and make him the most expensive wide receiver, right? So, again, they're looking. They know, right? The odds makers know kind of where the trends are going. I like Kenny Galladay. He's got an easy matchup against Atlanta, $6,700. $6, um, you know, those are your main guys. Some value plays here. You may want to consider Chase Claypool. He's been pretty hot. Deontay Johnson is returning. So, again, it could be either one of those guys that go off. Uh, both of them value play. It's funny how Juju has dropped down. It's interesting. He is actually cheaper. He's $5,500. Can you believe this? $5,500 for Juju. This is a guy that the mainstream, everybody told you, man, you got to draft this guy third round is what they told you. He is $5,500. Chase Claypool is $5,700. Shows you the Kinshipsis don't know what they're doing. Right now, people are realizing Claypool is becoming the one there, right? As I told you guys, okay? With value plays, man, when it comes to these guys, you got to be careful. I like to start like the Claypools, the guys that have been performing, those are the guys you want to look at. Now, I understand my guy Jefferson's on a bye week this week, but not too many value plays at wide receiver that I like this week that I'm like, oh, my God, I got to have that guy. You could go, like I said, T. Higgins, not a bad value play there. Um, other than that, I don't really like anybody else. I mean, I, I want to start the guys that I know that could perform. Robbie Anderson could perform as well. You may want to consider him as well as a value play. But other than that, I want to get some good wide receivers in the mix. Uh, Calvin Ridley being one, maybe a Kenny Galladay, like I said. Uh, Terry McLaurin, like I said, value play. I want to get a Claypool or Deontay in there. And like I said, T. Higgins, okay? So that's wide receiver. Uh, let's move on to the tight end. I'm going to give you a couple defenses as well. I do like TJ Hawkins in this week. Got him here. Good matchup. Second easiest versus position. If you want to play George Kittle, he does have the fifth hardest matchup versus position. But how do you not start him? I mean, he is $6,500. He is expensive. One of, if not the most expensive tight end here. Uh, just ahead of Kelsey. Kelsey, $6,300. Kelsey, probably a bit of a better value. 200 bucks cheaper on DraftKings and you know, has been pretty solid all the way through. You may want to consider starting Darren Waller, mid-range matchup. We said TJ Hawkinson, we like him. Robert Tanyan, I mean, I think he's a little banged up. Check the injury before. I'm just checking it a little bit here now. Uh, he was limited in practice. So, yeah, Tanyan, be cautious with him. I don't have the report fully. Again, check out tomorrow for last-minute news and notes, but I think he should be good to go. Uh, Logan Thomas, you may want to consider him. He had a good 13 points last week. Drew Sample due for a breakout game. Hasn't got it going there. And since he looks like T. Higgins has emerged there. Uh, again, when you look at a tight end, make sure you get a tight end that will perform. This is a position that I don't want to just plug in a random person and just get like zero points, right? Guys like Ian Thomas, guys that are suspect, guys that don't put up points. You want guys that are pretty solid. Jimmy Graham's a good value play. He's been pretty consistent as well. Uh, a guy you could plug in and get you around 10 points, okay? Uh, a couple defenses. I think the defense to start this week, I'm going to say the Bills. The Bills have a good matchup versus the Jets. Chiefs versus Denver is not a bad play. 49ers versus New England could be a smart play. Not bad. Uh, Packers versus Houston, nah, not really. Cleveland versus Cincy could be a smart one, but you never know, man. Sometimes Cincy plays really rough. Um, they have been playing tough there. And maybe even the Chargers versus Jacksonville. Those are your defensive matchups. All right, guys, so listen, DFS, whether you're playing it in GPP or head-to-head matches, whatever, however you play it, 
make sure you guys balance your roster. Anchor your team with an ace quarterback that you know is going to perform. Get a good running back. Take a little couple wild cards at wide receiver, right? But now, going into week seven, we have some consistency. We know a little bit more on which guys are going to perform. Make sure you start those guys, okay? You have a good trend. You got a good feel. You got a good rhythm on who's going to perform each week. Avoid the busts and start the guys that you think are going to perform. Again, go back and check the Starts and Sits show we did on Thursday with Tim the Bald Guy. That's really going to give you some more insight, okay? Smash thumbs up. Leave some Starts and Sits questions below. I'll try to get to as many as I humanly possibly can. I appreciate you guys being here. And again, join us on Flick Chat. We can chat during games, guys. There is a link here below. I'm telling you guys, you're going to absolutely love it. There's a link to Flick Chat. We can chat during games. I will be chatting during the fight today as well with Gaethje and Khabib and the games tomorrow on Sunday. Thanks for being here, guys, and I am out. Appreciate you.